Okay, so this is going to start what we call the pink notes of parent functions. And these are the functions we're going to use throughout the course. And we're just going to start today with the first couple, because the first one is one you're already familiar with, the linear function. This is the one you studied the most in algebra. This is the one that um, you have the most experience with, because if you remember the uh, equation, y equals x, it's right here, y equals x. So y equal to 1x, so it has a slope of 1, and the y-intercept is 0, so hopefully you remember that much. Um, so this is the parent function. This is the what the starting point. All the other functions we study in this course start here, with thing, and then things begin happening to the x value as we progress. So right now we're just reviewing what you already know. So let's look at the graph of the linear function. You, you know some of this already. So we come to our graph, and you know that and the parent, it starts at 0, 0, right? Our linear function. It has a slope of 1. So we go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. With a positive slope, we can just add some points. So what we're going to do is uh, draw a straight line through it. And from here, we're going to just document the points that we used, OK? So. Our parent points were 0, 0, and then we went 1, 1, oops, and we went 2, 2, and then down the left we went negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2. All right, so these are the points, these are kind of the original points of the linear equation that we did. Now, let's come back over and recap what we've done here. Let's talk about domain and intercepts and asymptotes and all the things. So when we're doing this, I want to focus on the domain and range, and we want to practice set and interval notation. OK, so now domain. Domain has to do with uh, your x values, right? And if we collapse this graph down to just the x values, like if we collapse this thing down and flatten it onto the x-axis, every x value would be used. So that's all real numbers are being used. So when I come over to domain and I write my domain, I'm going to write it in set notation first. So x such that x is an element of all real numbers. All right. And then as, as we look at this in interval notation, interval notation, remember, we read it from left to right. It goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? We always have to go left to right. So let's do that. So our interval notation will be negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's talk about range. The range of our graph is looking from bottom to top. And again, if we think about collapsing this line onto the y-axis this time, like moving our line down to the y-axis, if we collapse it this way, it would cover every y value up and down. So that means that our range is the set of all y values such that y is an element of all real numbers. OK, in interval notation, it would look like this, negative infinity to positive infinity. All right? Now, intercepts, remember, intercepts are points, coordinate pairs, x, y coordinates. And our intercept is this point right here, the center point. And so when I do my intercepts, I'm going to write my x-intercept as 0, 0, and my y-intercept as 0, 0. Now an asymptote, I don't know if you remember, is a line that, it, that the graph will approach, but it never crosses. It's the one we would graph as a dotted line. But this graph does not have any kind of asymptote, so we're just going to write none. So that's your review of the linear function. Now let's talk about the absolute value function. If you remember, absolute value is the distance from 0, right? So let's think about our points. If we put in a point of 0, 0, that's our origin, does that work in the equation? Absolute value of 0, 0, it does. So if I put in, let's put in, list our points over here. If I put in a 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1. So there's another point I can add to my graph. If I put in a 2, I get a positive 2. Again, it's distance from 0. 
Now let's go on the negative side. What if I put in a negative one? That becomes positive one, and a negative two becomes positive two. So my points are gonna do this. All right, so I'm gonna use my straight edge and draw me a line. And that's what my absolute value graph will look like. Now let's come back over here and let's talk about domain and range. If I collapse these down to the x-axis and fold them straight down, it's still gonna be all real numbers because these go on forever in the left-hand direction and it would go on forever in the right-hand direction. So that gives me a good idea that my, my domain is all real numbers. So let's come back and put that in set and interval notation. So my domain is x such that x is an element of all real numbers. And in interval notation, that's negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, the range, look at our graph again. The range says that if I collapse this line down to the y-axis, it's using every y value 0 and above, right? 0 and above. So there is a little bit of restriction on it, but it's zero and above. It's equal to zero and above. So it would look like this. Y such that Y is greater than or equal to zero. And then in interval notation, it would be a bracket on zero. We always do the lowest first, going to positive infinity. All right. Now let's think Y intercept and X intercept. Where is it crossing the X axis? It's crossing the x-axis at 0, 0. And where is it crossing at the y-axis? At 0, 0. Again, this graph, again, does not have any asymptotes. So we would write none. All right, this is all we're going to cover right now on the parent function notes. We're going to do the rest of these as the course progresses. So don't lose this paper. And then we're going to launch into the rest of the lesson. All right, in 6.1, we're going to transform absolute value graphs. So this is the generic formula for transformations. And you can notice that there's x and there's y like you're used to. But now there's a, c, and d. And those values and their locations will transform the graph in different ways. So let's break this down. Any value right here for a. If it's in the a slot, that means it's a vertical. It's either going to be a stretch or a shrink. How do you know if it's a stretch? Well, if that A value is greater than one, it's stretching the graph. If, it's, if A is between zero and one, meaning it's a decimal or a fraction, it's going to shrink it. Now D, let's jump over to D. This is going to be moving the graph up or down. So we call it a vertical shift, okay? up or down. So this one follows logic. If it's positive, it's going to go up. If it's negative, it's going to go down. Now C is, notice it's in the absolute value bars. In the future, it could be in the parentheses, but it's associated with the X value. And it always goes opposite logic. And what it's doing is a horizontal shift. Okay, this is a vertical shift over here. That's a horizontal shift. So by opposite of logic, I mean this. If C is positive, that means it's going to move to the left. You would think it would go right, but it moves left. If C is negative, then that means it's going to move the graph right. Now, we're going to put this into play with each of these functions on the paper. But notice our instructions here. Our instructions say this. State the transformations with regard to the parent function, graph each function, and then state domain and range using set notation. So we're still using set notation. So let's look at number one. Let me zoom in a little bit. Number one. So the first thing I want to do here is state the transformation. The negative three is going to move my graph down three units. Okay. Now, how do I graph that? Well, it's absolute value, so I know the basic shape. The down three means I'm going to take that or origin point that was right here, that starting point that we had, I'm going to move it down three places. One, two, three. And nothing's changing with my slope. It's still a slope of one going in this direction. And then a slope of negative one going in this direction. 
so it still looks like the V, so make sure your lines are good and straight. So there it is. Now, the third thing I have to do is set notation. So X such that, now let's look at our X values on the graph. If I collapse this down to the X axis, it's going to use up all my X values. So that means it's going to be the set of all real numbers. So X such that X is, all, is an element of all real numbers. Now let's switch our gears to Y. If I look at this, okay, these, these arrows pointing up are going to use up all these Y's, but it's going to stop right here at negative 3. It exists at negative 3, but it's going to stop there. So that means that my Y values, Y is greater than or equal to a negative 3. All right, that's what it looks like to do these transformations. Let's try. Let's look at number two. So if I look at my equation, the x plus one is within the absolute value bars. So that's going to be a horizontal shift. And since it's a plus one, remember it's actually going in the opposite direction as logic would tell you. It's going to go left one unit. So I'm going to take my origin and move it left one. And then I look at my slope. My slope is a 1 up here, so I'm just going to go up 1 over 1, plot me some points, and draw the lines. And there's my absolute value. So again, I want to do domain and range. So my domain, if I collapse that thing down, I would notice that it is going to cover all of my x-axis. So my domain would be all real numbers, so I can write it in set notation, x such that it's an element of all real numbers. Now the range, if I collapse it down, it's going to cover all the y-axis starting at zero upward. So it, my uh, range is slightly different. It's going to be y such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Let's try the next one. So I, inside here, that means it's negative 1, so that means it's actually going to move right 1, and this is going to be up 3. So I'm going to take my, my original point and move it right 1 and up 3. Have a slope up here, an A value of 1. So it's just going to go up 1 over 1 as it continues off the graph. Then I can think about domain and range. So domain, if I collapse it down at x-axis, all my x values are getting used, which then means my domain is beginning to be all real numbers again. Maybe, hopefully, you're beginning to see a pattern here. What about range? Range, I need to look at where's my y values. Well, it starts here, where y is 3, and it goes upward. but it, that's it. it. It's not all real numbers, so it's going to be greater than or equal to a positive 3. So what you're going to start noticing is that our domain is the same. Anytime we do absolute value, it's all real numbers for domain. Now there are limitations on my range, so don't just assume all of it is the same. Let's look at number 4. Alright, so this one, it looks like the parent function, but we have a negative 2 here. Now the negative means it's going to reflect over the x-axis, so it's going to go upside down, and the 2 is going to be a vertical stretch by 2. So I'm going to treat that like slope. Let me show you how to graph that. So my origin is staying the same, and I'm just going to go down. So I'm going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1 but I have to do it to both sides. So it's going, it's opening down and it has a slope of two. So let's think domain. What do X values are being used? Well, because of those arrows, everything's getting used. So my domain would be, again, X is an element of all real numbers. The range, Y, where's my Y values? My Y values start at zero and they go down so y is less than or equal to 0 this time. Look at number 5. Lots of stuff going on here. What is that 1 half doing? Well, that's a vertical shrink 
by one half. We'll treat that as a slope in a moment. What is the plus three doing? It's moving it left three. The minus five is down five. All right, so let's find our new origin. Let's go left three, one, two, three, down five, one. There's down five. Now to do the one half shrink, I'm gonna treat it like slip. I'm gonna go up one over two, up one over two. There it is. Now I just go the other direction until it goes beyond my graph. Okay, so you know the drill by now. What's my domain? Well, hopefully you're seeing it. It's going to be all real numbers because of those x values. So x is an element of all real numbers. My range, where's the y values? Well, the y values start down here where it, y is negative 5 and then they continue up. So y is such that y is greater than or equal to a negative 5. Look at number 6. Now number 6 is a little weird because this one is hanging out here and this negative is there. So when you see an, a value like that, you wanna move this to the back. Now, it's not a negative one, it's a positive one. So it's gonna, that negative is with this one right here, that a value. So negative one, absolute value of x minus two, that one moves to the back, becomes a plus one. It always is a plus one, we just don't write it when it's in the front. So now let's look at our transformations. What's going on? Well, the negative one means it's going to uh, reflect over the x-axis. The minus two means it's going to move right to. The plus one is going to move it up one. All right, so let's graph that. It's going to write two up one, and it's reflected down. But it has a slope of one. It's just going downward. So it's just going to go Okay, now let's do domain and range real quick. Domain again all real numbers. So x is an element of all real numbers. Range What where's my y values? Okay, they start here at y is 1 and then they go down, okay? So I need to indicate that y is less than or equal to a positive 1. All right, that's how I'd graph that. Now let's look at this bottom portion. All right, look at number 7. We're going to write an absolute value function matching the description. So we're going to start with the parent function, translated 12 units up, 6 units left. So 12 units up means I'm going to put a plus 12 in the back of the equation. What about six units left? That's gonna be in the absolute value and it's gonna be opposite the direction I want it to go. So if I want it to go left, I need to put a plus six in there. So my equation would be f of x equals absolute value of x plus six plus the 12. Number eight, parent function is vert stretched vertically by a factor of eight, translated down seven, write 3 and reflect it over the x. Okay, so let's break this down. Vertically stretched, so that means an a is 1, a is 8, that's in the front, right? Translated down 7, so that means that k is a negative 7, it goes in the back. This is in the front. Write 8, so h is going to move, I'm sorry, write 3 h is 3, but when I put it in the absolute value, I have to write it opposite. And then reflect it over the x-axis. That means that a is negative. All right, so let's build this equation. So f of x equals a negative 8, absolute value of x minus 3, and then minus 7. All right, hope this makes some sense, and you're getting the hang of this, and we'll see you in class.